Welcome to the Small Hospital Performance Improvement 101 Technical Assistance Webinar. My name is Kate Stenyam and I am a Senior Program Specialist with the National Rural Health Resource Center. The National Rural Health Resource Center is the technical assistance provider for the SHIP program. We are located in Duluth, Minnesota with staff in Florida and Alabama as well. We are a nonprofit organization focused on the following five core areas, transition to value and population health, collaboration and partnership, performance improvement, health information technology, and workforce. This SHIP 101 webinar is designed to provide an overview of the SHIP program to new SHIP coordinators, State Office of Rural Health Directors, or anyone at the state level that is new to SHIP. I will be discussing the following items on this webinar. We'll give an overview of the SHIP program, SHIP application and award process, hospital eligibility and funding, the funding priorities for the SHIP program, the SHIP program purchasing menu, hospital application spreadsheet, grant guidance, tips for program administration and technical assistance and resource availability. The Small Rural Hospital Improvement Grant Program is administered through the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services and the, through their Federal Office of Rural Health Policy. Eligible hospitals are able to apply for funding to assist in the implementation of activities related to value-based purchasing programs, accountable care organizations, and payment bundling. Through SHIP, small rural hospitals that meet certain eligibility requirements are able to apply for those pieces, and we'll go through the eligibility pieces next. I mentioned the term eligible hospitals on the previous slide. SHIP eligible hospitals must be located in, in, located in the United States and its territories. They must be 49 beds or less, non-federal hospitals. They may be for-profit, not-for-profit, or tribal. And critical access hospitals are also eligible. Federal funding for SHIP is secured through the State Office of Rural Health in each of the states with eligible hospitals. The State Office of Rural Health solicits applications from SHIP eligible hospitals within their state by using a hospital application spreadsheet that is sent to the State Office of Rural Health, and it is also located on the National Rural Health Resource Center's website. All states participate in SHIP except for Delaware, New Jersey, Connecticut, and Rhode Island. The State Office of Rural Health submits a grant application to the Federal Office of Rural Health Policy on behalf of the SHIP eligible hospitals in their state. The State Office of Rural Health is the official grantee of record and serves as the fiscal intermediary for all eligible hospitals within the state. It is important to note that all hospitals must receive the same amount of money. Pooling of funds in the form of networks or consortia is encouraged as a way to increase purchasing power of hospitals pursuing similar activities. SHIP funds can also be used to support rural health clinic investments as long as they are aligned with the SHIP purchasing menu, which we will discuss further along in the presentation. The State Office of Rural Health receives the federal funds, verifies hospital eligibility within their state, makes awards to eligible hospitals or through networks, and ensures the appropriate use of funds. At the end of the grant period, the State Office of Rural Health submits a financial report to the Health Resource and Service Administration's Division of Grants Management Operations. A few commonly asked questions are, if SHIP funds were used for a different category than what the hospital initially asked for, what should I do? You can remind the hospital of their agreement, monitor and evaluate progress, and the likelihood of it happening again. The hospital should seek prior approval from the SHIP coordinator at the State Office of Rural Health before changing activities. Another frequently asked question that we hear is what can the State Office of Rural Health do if hospitals do not spend all of their funds? State Offices of Rural Health can redistribute funds among all hospitals or undertake a SHIP-oriented training. They may also develop a special project aligned with SHIP guidance and hospital needs. If the SHIP coordinator has questions, they should contact the Federal Office of Rural Health Pro policy program officer for guidance. Funds cannot be transferred to another participating hospital 
without prior Federal Office of Rural Health Policy approval. So what are the funding priorities that a hospital must follow in selecting investment activities? The first priority is that hospitals must fully implement the Hospital Consumer Assessment of Healthcare Providers and Systems, which is called HCAPS for short, and the International Classification of Diseases Version 10, which is noted as ICD-10. Furthermore, hospitals must publicly report HCAPS scores to hospital compare. Priority is not given to one over the other of, of HCAPS and ICD-10, and hospitals may choose to work on both simultaneously. The second priority for investment activities are all other options listed on the SHIP purchasing menu. In 2013, the Federal Office of Rural Health Policy instituted a SHIP purchasing menu. Eligible SHIP hospitals can select investments from this menu, and the investment activities are broken into three categories, value-based purchasing, accountable care organizations, and payment bundling. These hyperlinks will, get, will guide you to more information about, more, about each category. This slide outlines many of the investment options on the SHIP purchasing menu. Many of them are self-explanatory, while a few of them are more general in nature. Please note that this is not an exhaustive list. Rather, it is meant to provide some examples to assist hospitals in selecting activities that will work best for them and fit under the guidance guidelines of the program. Hospitals should contact their State Office of Rural Health with questions regarding the appropriateness or fit of a certain activity. If the State Office of Rural Health is unsure about the appropriateness of an activity, they should contact the appropriate Federal Office of Rural Health Pro Policy Project Coordinator. For value-based purchasing, consider adopting Six Sigma, Lean, or the Institute of Healthcare Improvements Plan, Do, Study, Act, or other such efficiency or quality improvement processes to address performance issues related to value-based purchase initiatives, such as the provider-based clinic quality improvement reporting and scores, or software and training to prepare staff for payment based on quality. Here is a list of activities to consider under accountable care organizations or shared savings. You can also address performance issues related to accountable care organizations and shared savings in categories such as non-clinical operations, board organization and operations, multi-hospital and network projects, emergency department transfer communications, health information exchange, swing bed utilization, care coordination or population health, Hospitals interested in systems performance training may want to consider adopting a framework approach such as Baldridge, Balanced Scorecard, or a logic model. For payment bundling or prospective payment system investment activities, consider adopting, again, efficiency or quality improvement processes to address performance issues in financial improvement or operational and multi-hospital network projects. A frequently asked question that we receive is, can a hospital spend leftover money on another activity on the SHIP purchasing menu? And yes, hospitals that have realized a cost savings can spend leftover money on other SHIP investments. The State Office of Rural Health, once again, must approve any changes in the use of these funds. So why is it important to look into forming networks for SHIP? Like I mentioned earlier, pooling of SHIP funds in the form of networks or consortia is encouraged as a way to increase purchasing power of hospitals pursuing similar activities. It can also provide education and outreach, channel communication, pool resources and streamline the administrative burden on the state office, and share best practices and benchmarking throughout the rural hospitals. Here are a few examples of SHIP successful networks that are located in Georgia and Texas. These hyperlinks will provide more information and a recorded webinar if you want to learn more. They are located on the National Rural Health Resource Center's website. Alaska has also pooled SHIP funds and utilized their network to identify required measures for reporting with the Quality Improvement Organization review definitions and measurements, understand clinical 
implications and ensure that no duplication of work is done by the hospital association. Once again, if you're interested in learning more about Alaska's network, click on the hyperlink to learn more and listen to a recorded webinar. Some supplemental ideas and resources. You can find best practices, practice ideas from SHIP states on the National Rural Health Resource Center's website. Some examples include hierarchical conditional coding education, value-based payment education, such as alternative payment models, data analytics training, lean projects related to the SHIP menu categories, and pricing transparency training. Here is a screenshot of the hospital application template. This is updated and modified every year by the National Rural Health Resource Center and sent out to the state offices of rural health so that you may send it out to your SHIP eligible hospitals. It is important to note that once the hospitals fill this information out, the state offices of rural health should always keep their applications on file in case there needs to be an integrity check from the Federal Office of Rural Health Policy at any time. Again, this is just a screenshot of the fiscal year eight, 2018 state spreadsheet, and this can be found on and downloadable, downloadable on the National Rural Health Resource Center's website. So some tips for program administration. When you're doing application planning, make sure you perform an environmental scan between the state hospital programs to find gaps that the SHIP program could fill. This means you want to be sure that you're not duplicating efforts of other initiatives going on within your state. These activities could be from your quality improvement organization or through the FLEX program. When it's po whenever possible, you should utilize SHIP funds to support and enhance activities going on throughout your state if the topic fits within the SHIP purchasing menu, but again, make sure that you are not duplicating. You want to encourage networks to provide services for all SHIP hospitals eligible hospitals and work with hospitals to identify appropriate benchmarks and project deliverables. One thing that we often see at the National Rural Health Resource Center is states that are focusing um, on outputs and not outcomes. So it's very important to identify those benchmarks and those outcomes from the very beginning of the program. The National Rural Health Resource Center also has a best practice guide for contract management, and I would encourage you to read through that. Some other tips for program administration are to track and monitor the SHIP hospital investments. You can host a webinar with SHIP hospitals to reinforce the expectations at the start of the grant period. This also gives them a, a nice time for them to be able to ask you any questions and make sure that there is clear and transparent communication about the SHIP program. Disperse SHIP funds through annual contracts with payments to the hospital or the network or consortia, and those should be made in two equal payments. The first payment should come to them upon the contract execution, and the second payment should be upon receipt and approval of the mid-year expense and or final activity report. When tracking and monitoring SHIP hospital investments, you want to choose a random selection of hospitals for site visits to review their purchases, documentation, and progress. You also would want to create a project management database, which we have a hyperlink to one here through um, the State Office of Rural Health in Wisconsin, or a spreadsheet to record projects submitted on the hospital application form and use this information when you go out onto your site visits to ensure that the hospitals are completing the activities that they had signed up for at the beginning of the grant cycle. As a tip, if you're contracting with a health system, contact the health system auditors to ensure the grant amounts, the contract numbers, and projects recorded within the health system match what the hospitals are reporting back to you. So some more tips for program administration. This is specifically if you have are working with a network or consortia in your state. It requires a vendor contractor to have a quarterly check-in with the State Office of Rural Health. This is really going to help ensure that progress is being made on the network project. And like I had mentioned before, that you are receiving those specific outcomes from the network and consortia. You want to choose, again, a random selection of network hospitals to, re to review their service delivery and network via phone calls or on-site, if at all possible. This also helps to ensure 
that progress is being made on the network project in a timely manner. So what do we do with non-compliant hospitals or networks? What if they do not follow the ship investment priorities? Maybe they don't complete their projects or they deviate from the State Office of Rural Health approved activities, or potentially they don't meet all the program requirements, including submission for required documentation for reimbursement by the State Office of Rural Health. Some examples of your response to noncompliance will be only provide reimbursement for State Office of Rural Health approved completed activities. Don't include noncompliant hospitals in next fiscal year's SHIP funding request. This needs to be based on circumstances and should always be checked with the Federal Office of Rural Health Policy Program Coordinator. You also can withhold reimbursement and request a refund for incomplete activities and unspent funds. Again, it's always best to check touch base with your Federal Office of Rural Health Policy Program Coordinator. Please note that the following documents are provided on our website at the National Rural Health Resource Center for quick download, and they are on the SHIP-specific page. On there, you can find um, the non-compete continuation guidance, the frequently asked questions, the fiscal year 2018 hospital application, which is updated every year, the fiscal year 2018 spreadsheet, allowable investment activities handout, and the SHIP Coordinator Overview PowerPoint. Here are some other resources to assist SHIP State Office Coordinators with improving their non-compete continuation, their NCC applications, and are also available on the National Rural Health Resource Center SHIP TA website. You can find specific tips for program administration, again, the frequently asked questions, the SHIP application pieces, and the SHIP quarterly reporting form. That is all the information that we have right now to share with you for the SHIP 101 webinar. We want to thank you for listening and let us know if you ever have any questions. Here is a link to our website and the contact information for the Federal Office of Rural Health Policy is Bridget Ware and Janine Myers are the program coordinators right now. And finally, here is the contact information for the SHIP TA team at the National Rural Health Resource Center. Thank you for joining us for this webinar.